Hello, Module 10, Hydropower, and this is Part 5. So, now we're going to talk about electrical generation. Worldwide, hydropower provides about 20% of the electrical grid, and um, this is actually up from about 16, 15%, and that's because Three Gorges Dam in China is officially built and running, which is the largest hydropower facility in the world. As far as the United States, currently hydropower provides about 10% of the electric grid supply in the U.S. And just getting a feel, this is very outdated, so I'm going to actually just grace right over here because it's really not. The U.S. is still up, but China is nowhere. China's numbers are triple that number currently because this number predates Three Gorges Dam, which came online in 2010, so... As far as hydropower, uh, Norway produces about 90% of its electricity with some form of hydropower. Uh, New Zealand is 75% hydropower on its electricity. And like I said, we have the U.S. Even in the U.S., hydropower produces enough power or enough electricity to provide the needs of 28 million people. Uh, that would include places that don't have a huge population, such as the states of Wisconsin, Michigan, Minnesota, Indiana, Iowa, Ohio, Missouri, Nebraska, Kansas, North and South Dakota, Kentucky, and Tennessee. So we can do a lot with hydropower. Um, and it's just a question of, once again, weighing the consequences, the pros and cons. Uh, we can build a hydropower system pretty rapidly. We're talking about a couple years if I'm building a small scale. If I'm trying to build something large scale, then we're talking a multi-year project at this point. Because in today's world, unlike in the 1930s where everything could be green lighted immediately based on need, there's a lot that has to go into a big build project. So to build dams like the monster dam that is Hoover, uh, I would need to have multiple years. We're talking about years of, of research, environmental research as to building it, and then uh, multiple years of building the system and having it come online, meeting safety regulations. There are a lot of positives to hydropower, including that it's a fairly green environmental uh, risk. It would reduce our need for fossil fuels and we are using something that is renewable. There is more water coming on down the river, right? As long as I'm not damming it up too much that I'm losing it all to evaporation, there will be more water. Uh, of course, with climate change, we're also finding the issue of where it's raining, when it's raining, and how much rain we're receiving. So how much water is entering the groundwater system and inadvertently then entering into our streams and river systems is all changing. And so places that used to be excellent at providing power are not necessarily good at providing power anymore. As uh, global climate change progresses, places up like where we are in New England are going to continue to receive more and more rain. And so we are actually getting wetter as the rest of the United States is getting drier. So this information is changing and it's going to take a lot of research and study to move forward with large scale hydropower. With that said, we have answers on the small scale and I'm going to show you some of these. So cons, water level drop. This is Hoover Dam once again, and this is the old water level. This staining on the rocks is actually just a uh, sediment deposit, so salt deposit from the fresh water when it evaporated down. And this is now the new water table, and it never will be this tall again. The, the water regime has completely changed since it was built. And so in the last 60 to 70 years, we just will not receive that much river water down the Colorado. This is my big old head down here and you can see this is the bank or the old bank of the Colorado River. It will never reach this height again. As far as cost, hydropower is a stable cost to the grid system. It's, it's something that I have the water held back in a dam when I'm talking about big electrical generation and hydropower, and therefore I can make the energy based on demand. And so the cost won't fluctuate based on the demand chain being interrupted. Unlike with fossil fuels, where if I get hit with a hurricane and my ability to produce crude oil into 
a gasoline based fuel or home heating fuel or whatever fuel I need, uh, the hydropower system is, is constantly online. I'm just opening and shutting the gates on my penstock. And so the water can just flow down and feed the system and produce power as needed when I need it, how I need it. Just talking a little bit more about dams, and I said that most dams in the United States have nothing to do with hydroelectric power. Here is the 2% of all dams are hydroelectric power, and you can see what all the other dams in the United States are built and used for. So how it works. Hydroelectric power works by capturing the energy of falling water, so I'm basically using gravity to my advantage. And what I have in most traditional hydropower systems is a dam structure that holds water back, creating a reservoir or reserve of water, and a control gate that I can raise and lower. And I will raise it up to create the amount of uh, water streaming through at the speeds, so the miles per hour, the speeds that I need down the penstock to turn my water turbine. My water turbine is attached to a shaft that is attached to a generator. That generator, once again, electrons will jump and I can send it out onto my grid. This is just those parts of the generator broken down into terms again. Here are some pictures of how large these systems are. So this is a generator itself. So this is the inner housing body of the generator where the electrons will jump. And this is the generator. These are all above the water turbine. The water turbine are below these systems. And humans, generator. Humans, generator. I'm trying to get you to get a feel for how big these things are. These are monster structures. Um, which brings me into the three different systems that we build to create hydropower. We have three different versions, and the first one is impoundment. This is the structure that we think of as a dam. Diversion, which is also called run of the river, and pump storage, which is very, very small scale and can be done intermittently in specific locations and completely on demand. So impoundment is the most common type. This is the one where I'm building a big electric facility and it is Hoover Dam. So here's a picture of Hoover Dam. This is the new Skyway Bridge that crosses over so that only people who are going to visit the dam are allowed to drive over the dam. This is a post 9-11 fear, right, that has created this jump over bridge because we don't want to destroy the structure and, you know, hurt populations. And so... And it just gives it a great feel of how big this system is. And in today's world of drones, I can say that this picture is not a drone picture. This is a personal picture of mine. And this is actually taken from a butte that is way up and, and a very uh, far hike, hot, tiring hike uh, above to take a look down at the system. As far as the size and structure, Hoover Dam was constructed from 1931 to 1936. It generates about 4.2 billion kilowatt hours annually, so per year. Its height is 726 feet tall. Its length is 1,244 feet. Its elevation at its crest, so you are above sea level at 1,232 feet. And the volume of water that it's holding back is about uh, 3,250,000 cubic yards of water. So this is a monster structure. Diversion or run of the river is a great option for today's world. I would say that the idea of building dam structures in the United States is not something we're going to go for. It's something that if there's already a dam in existence, we might upgrade them to become hydroelectric systems. But in today's world, the environmental impact is just too great in building a dam and turning something that was once flowing water into a lake. And it will affect populations of people, not just environment or animals in these locations. And so run of the river is really the the way to go if I'm going to produce huge amounts of power. And this is a diverted water where I'm going to divert the water down a penstock to the side of the river. So on that note, I'm going to pick up with pump storage and my last video on hydropower.